सदगमय तमसो मोतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मा अमृत गमय ओ शांति 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 ओ मे द डिवाइन लीडर्स फ्रॉम द अनरियल टू द रियल from darkness to light from death to immortality om peace 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 This devotional song is written by Kavi Guru Rabindranath Thakur, the guru of all poets. Lord, please bow my head down to touch the dust of your feet. Let all my vanity drown in my tears. To glorify myself, I insult my own self. I remain absorbed in myself. let me not advertise myself for my own gain let your desire be fulfilled in every action of my life i pray for ultimate peace please guard me by residing in the lotus of my heart
I am reading from the book The Way to God as taught by Sri Ramakrishna by Swami Lokeshwarananda. The chapter is Bhakti Yoga, the Path of Devotion. Sri Ramakrishna, while talking about the Divine Mother Kali, used to say, She is by no means a Godmother, she is your own mother. A son can force his demand on his mother. Once cartloads of money were coming from the estate of Trilokya's mother. They were guarded by many red turbaned stalwarts armed with big sticks. Trilokya, who had been waiting on the road with his men, pounced upon the money and took it away by force. A son has a very strong claim on his mother's wealth. People say that a mother cannot very well sue her son in a court of law. Sri Ramakrishna said, People say that the mother's attachment to the child is much stronger than the father's. You may be very old, but if you are unhappy or in distress, your first thought is of your mother. When Sri Krishna was a child, his mother Yashoda used to say to him, When you take the cows to graze, don't walk in front of them or they may butt you with their heads. And don't go very far. Wherever you go, sometimes play on your flute. I want to be able to hear you while I am doing my housework. Yashoda tells him, who is God himself, the savior from all dangers, to be careful. In one of our devotional scriptures, Sri Krishna says, I am under the control of that person who regards himself as greater than me. One incident about the life of, from the life of uh, a juggler and here a story our ladies juggler by Anatole France illustrates this many years ago there was a man who made his living as a juggler but at heart he was a sincere lover of God and was especially devoted to the Virgin Mary he lived near a monastery and in time came to know its abode Gradually, he began to associate with the monks and at last decided to renounce the world and live with the monastery. All the monks there worshipped the Virgin Mary. They had various kinds of talents. Some wrote religious books, some copied out old manuscripts, some painted religious pictures, some composed hymns, etc. Everything was done as worship of Mary. Whatever they did was for her. Now, this man, he thought, I can't write books or paint pictures or compose hymns. I don't know anything else. I have no way of serving the mother, Mary. Alas, how, how unfortunate I am. Then suddenly a thought came to him. I can perform my juggling act and in that way make mother Mary happy. From then on, he waited for a time when no one was in the church. Then he would go there and perform his juggling in front of Mary's image. Every day he performed for her. Slowly his sadness left him and a great joy could be seen on his face. Yet he could not hide forever what he was doing. Soon a murmur rose in the monastery. The monks wanted to know what was going on every day in the church. So the abbot 
sent two old monks to find out. When they came to the church, they saw that the juggler was entertaining Mother Mary by standing on his head and then juggling knives and balls. It was the act he used to perform before he became a monk. The old monks thought that the man must be really a crazy man. Does anyone act like this in a church? They, this was a terrible infringement of the rules. But before they could say anything, they saw Mother Mary coming down the altar. She walked straight to the juggler, who was exhausted and sweating profusely, and wiped the sweat from his brow with a corner of her mantle. The monks were wonderstruck. They had prayed so much. They had worked so hard for Mother Mary, yet she had never come to them. But this juggler, who had done, never done anything, had been touched by her. How could that happen? And finally, a small incident from Holy Mother. Once Holy Mother's cat annoyed her, and she picked up a stick to frighten it. But the cat lay down at her feet, as if to seek refuge. We all are like that cat. Mother comes to us in a frightening form, but what can we do? We have no one besides her. We place our head at her feet. Here is it. And today is uh, Mother's Day. So let us meditate on our own mother um, for some time. Uh, her care, love, since uh, we are in her home, when we were born and helpless, and how much care and love and sacrifice Mother does for the child by which we grow and we are up to this stage, all because of our mother's love to us. Let us meditate on our own mother who gets the power of love through the Divine Mother. Om.
Welcome friends. Happy Mother's Day to you all, mothers and those who have motherly hearts. Today's topic of uh, talk is uh, desireless bhakti, all about love, mother's love, and this is also about love. But only this uh, adjective is given for bhakti, desireless. Uh, Bhakti itself is love and love is, as Swami Vivekananda says, one of the triangle of the love is it knows no bargain, no shopkeeping, there should be no thought of return, otherwise the triangle is not there and bhakti is not there. There is no love without that. Love knows no fear, love knows no bargain and love is the idea, highest idea. These are the three triangles of the love, the, the bhakti. Uh, triangle. So, without any of one of these, it is not the bhakti. So, bhakti means nothing in expectation, nothing in return. Uh, so, it is, should be free from the selfish desire. So, here desire just means selfish desire, something for myself. Um, when there is uh, some love, there is definitely a desire to someone we love. What is the desire we have to love, the, the one who loves? We want that person's good. We want that person's happiness. Uh, that is the love that we express. Or we feel, it's a special kind of feeling. You feel peaceful and happy in the presence of people, person that you love. You may not want uh, anything because there's nothing to want. But there is some relationship that gives you fulfillment, satisfaction, contentment and peace in the presence of someone you love, whether it is a friend or a children or a mother or, or a divine being itself. So that all comes under bhakti. So those desires of uh, peace and joy and uh, for the good of those, uh, suppose we love our children, we want their good. So that is not the desire. Yet desire less bhakti means the bhakti without any selfish desire. So uh, the word desire may be there. We strive to uh, realize God. So is desire to realize God is a desire? So it is not a desire according to Sri Ramakrishna. Something, the name has to be given, but uh, that doesn't suit, that doesn't fit the real definition. Uh, desire something is that you really want uh, to have you, grab you, possess something like that. Like the desire to, um, to love God is no desire. Sri Ramakrishna gives the example of a green called Hinche in Bengali. He says Hinche green is not the green. Other green may create some side effects, some stuff of trouble, but Hinche green is very curative, it's very soothing and beneficial. So though it is green like any other green, but it's so different in property, he says about the sugar candy. Sugar candy, though it is sweet, but so different from other sweets. So they don't taste sweets. Other sweets may create acidity or other thing problems, but uh, the sugar candy, it soothes your stomach and it relieves you. So though it is sweet in taste, so similarly the desire to realize God and desire to have devotion to God is no desire. So according to definition, any true love of God should be desireless bhakti, desireless love. Any love is desireless. So but why do we say then desireless bhakti? Bhakti as such is a devotion to God. Somehow it brings us to God. Something that is connected to God is we call devotion. That brings us to God. What are the reasons that brings us to God? In the Gita it is said there are four kinds of people who come to God. Chatur Vidha Bhajantema. Who are they? Artha Jigyasu Artharthi Gyani. Those who are Artha, afflicted, uh, they suffer something. So to remove their affliction, deprivation, loss, uh, something is there in their, they have become suffering. So, so they want peace of mind. So they come to God. So they definitely desire to remove the suffering, the bereavement uh, that is there. So the loss, 
uh, the pain of uh, the suffering. So they find peace in the presence of God. They are deputed to God, but there is wish that God will remove that my coming to God will make me free from the trouble that I am suffering. So Artha is that. Jigyasu is another category of a devotee that uh, that Krishna says in the Gita, who is uh, who is curious to know the things. Jigyasu wants to know seeker of knowledge. So that is also another who is God or you want to know even uh, the things the more seeking the knowledge than removing the affliction and suffering. That is another kind of person more of a, a more of regarding to the intellect to to um, th that sort of thing. The third category, Sri Krishna says, is Artharthi. They are also devotees. They have desires. What are they? Artharthi. They want some artha. They want some means. Something is missing in their life. They think they have some wants. And to fulfill that want, they come to God. They are also devoted of, devotees of God. But they are not desire free. They have desire. They want um, success in life. They want success of other person. They want good health. They want prosperity. All that uh, comes through the bhakti to God. Uh, most of the people worship Lakshmi uh, for this to, to have the prosperity, to have the wealth, to have uh, remove their want of uh, poverty. So Lakshmi is worshipped that way. Uh, Saraswati also to have the, um, the wealth of knowledge. So all this you can say Artharthi or Jigyasu anyway you can put that uh, those who seek uh, uh, the knowledge from Lakshmi. But that is not free from desire. Well, this Sri Krishna says there is a fourth category, Jnani, who knows the real nature of God. And they know that God takes all our care. They have already understood the relationship between the God and the devotee, the Paramatma and the Atma, Jivatma. They know that. We are all eternally connected. God is always taking our care. And they have understood the relationship between God and the Self. And also the power of God, and the, as God says, I take every care of my devotee. And these people are also called devotees of God. And naturally such a devotee are, uh, are the desireless devotees. Sri Krishna says there, Tesham Jnani Nitya Yukta Eka Bhaktir Vishishyate Those Jnanis are supremely devoted and they have one-pointed devotion. Others have devotion, they come to me, but they have many pointed devotion. They have devotion or love for money, love for success, those are all, and also they come to me to pray. So there are many pointed. This one, Jnani is Eka Bhaktir Vishishyate, one pointed devotion and they are Jnanis. We often term Jnani and Bhakta, they are different, Jnana Yoga and Bhakti Yoga are contradictory. Sri Krishna clearly says, Jnani is Eka Bhaktir Vishishyate. And he says, Priyo hi jnani no atyartham aham satam mama priya. I love jnanis very much. They are very much devoted, they are very much dear to me. And also, I am supremely devoted to them. So that is the definition of jnani. Who knows who is God? What is our relationship with God? With all things, when you know, then it becomes desireless bhakti. When you know God takes our care for everything, why would you have to worry for anything? With such faith and trust in God, with such surrender in God, when we approach God, we strengthen that relation with God, then it becomes the devotion of a jnani. So now this uh, bhakti, the desireless bhakti, you say, or the real true bhakti, is defined in uh, in the Narada Bhakti Sutra, is Bhakti is Tasmin Parama Prema Rupa. Sa Tasmin Parama Prema Rupa. Sa means Bhakti. Bhakti is, what is Bhakti defined? Parama Prema Rupa. It is of the nature of supreme love. Supreme love to what? To that. What is that? Here we say God, the ideal. So, when you really love your ideal, then it becomes bhakti. There should be that uh, we know love. Everyone has someone or other loving. We know uh, we love our children, we love our parents, we love so many things. 
So those are just love, prema, hmm? priya, prema. But here the devotion will become devotion when it is parama prema, supreme devotion. The other thing can trickle the way the flow of love can trickle. But here is the main force of love flowing towards God. Then it becomes bhakti. Bhakti is parama prema to God. Supreme love for God is bhakti. When there is supreme love for God, there can be no other desire. It already becomes desireless bhakti. Now that we could understand that uh, bhakti should be desireless, it is the supreme love for God, and um, that gives the fulfillment of life, that takes away all our problems and worries of life, and that makes us peaceful, happy, and makes our life, uh, the purpose of life successful if we can have devotion to God. Now the problem is how to, now what we love in the world, we love whatever makes us happy. Happiness becomes the goal of life of every being. So happiness, people seek in different things happiness. Some seek happiness in success, some seek in long life, some seek in prosperity, uh, some seek in, uh, in being, having a name and fame. So many ways people, people find fulfillment and find happiness in life. So, but those happiness, if they analyze, do, them, do not last long. Therefore, the time being and they go away. So, is there anything that is everlasting happiness that will always make me feel happiness, that will never go away? Everything that we possess will be separated, will be gone. So, that thing that will always remain with us, that source of happiness is called God. So that to have that love for God and gain that happiness, gain that, uh, mm, that pure joy, everlasting pure joy, that is the thing that we call devotion to God. So problem that we now understand that devotion to God is the only thing, that ultimate thing that we should seek, that we are seeking knowingly or unknowingly and should strengthen our path towards that. Now the question comes, how to strengthen our quest for God, our search for God, our love for God, how to strengthen that? So again, Sri Krishna Gita comes here and gives us guidance. Hmm? Krishna Vande Jagat Guru, the world teacher Krishna. Today we said, we heard that how Rabindranath uh, also teaches, his Kavi Guru he is called, he, his teachings, his songs are all full of wonderful message, wonderful teachings. Those who understand, they find the great message. Anywhere you find some message that will change our life, he's a teacher, he's a guru. So that's why they call Prabhupada a guru. But Krishna is called Jagat Guru, Krishna Mande Jagat Guru. So what Krishna says, how can we strengthen the love, the bhakti, the desireless bhakti? So he says, you have to be first fully put full attention to me. Full attention, and he gives the description. How full attention? Mayeva mana adhatsva mai buddhim nivesaya. Our inner instrument is uh, called two things. It's called antakarana, that is inner instrument. It manifests as four parts, but two are main. One is called mind, another is called intellect. Mind is the one that often um, gives us many options. We should do this or that. We should seek this or that. So all mind is the one that gets, brings us many options. And the buddhi, what is the buddhi? Buddhi is the one which decides. Mind says, uh, you should um, eat uh, now, uh, you should eat uh, any sweet, huh? rasamalai you should eat. And then buddhi says, no, 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 calorie. This buddhi will say, don't eat. So mind will always bring the things to us. So this mind is very active and that makes us uh, um, waver from this place to that place. And that's called a mind. Sankalpa, Vikalpa, Atmak, Manaha. It's either Sankalpa or Vikalpa. It's on this pro or cons, always it shows to us. And what is Buddhi? Nishaya, Atmika, Buddhi. It firms, it gives final decision. This you should do. It says, yes, you can eat. It is very tasty. If buddhi allows and supports mind, you eat, you get calorie. 
and otherwise you will say you don't have more calorie don't eat sweet with these obstructs it it devices you and sometimes what happens our mind becomes powerful than buddhi buddhi knew that eating this will be calorie or if it is diabetic it will be sugar but the mind becomes powerful it says what is there today one day you have to eat that um, tomorrow you will not eat or you will walk a little more or um, you just skip uh, some other sweet this is so tasty you will not get all with that rasamala is so nice sweet now buddhi falls alone mind overpowers and we follow the mind buddhi is left aside and when that happens buddhi decision is not taken and mind overpowers then there is problem in life buddhi has to be given prominence who decides it gives us right decision sometimes when mind becomes too powerful buddhi is not allowed to work mind works like the buddhi buddhi has no play in our life mind says i should should i eat it then little may thought may come it may be difficult but thought is so feeble whatever mind says you go on doing that you become slave to mind buddhi faculty of buddhi is not working in you it has become dormant in your life and that becomes a dangerous situation that becomes the fall of our life so here it is said um, sri krishna says mai man mai eva man adat so your mind wavering to so many things put that unto me if you see you put that your mind into me so all you should think is not about the rasamalai you should think of krishna 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 and what about the sweetness what about the taste what about the enjoyment of having good food krishna says don't worry the name of god is much more tastier than the sense enjoyment that you get from the world just you have to learn to find that taste you have never tried to get the taste of god's name love of god that's why you find the worldly things to be so tasty attractive charming uh, but that is just appearance real taste is in god i am the one who gives little test to that and you totally forget me says sri krishna that's why he said put your mind in me mai buddhim nivesha and the intellect also you put in me that i am the supreme i am the source of all joy i am the source of all happiness that you seek in life i am that i am here it says that's why you put that nivasishyasi mai eva ata urdham na samshaya when you put your mind and intellect in me there will be your, your progress urdham there is no doubt about that connect yourself to me connect to god connect to the higher ideal and you will gain strength your all love will be free from worldly desires who brings bondage suffering anxiety to you and by connecting with me by being freed from the worldly desires your life will be peaceful happy joyful that will be there and he says and sri krishna doesn't say that put all your mind in me put your intellect in me and people are there devotee may say but you say it is so it is even say even arjuna said you say control your mind and put it in me arjuna said you said so easily if i find so difficult it is like controlling the wind how can i do that so krishna admits yes it is difficult in the beginning but it can be achieved through practice it is possible it is doable arjuna i am not saying to you anything that is not doable by a human being i am saying to you if you practice if you try you will be successful the diff- the only is your intellect should be strong to make you practice this don't give up and here sri krishna says in the 12th chapter ata chittam samadhatum na shaknosi if you can't fix your mind in me there is a way what is that abhyasa yoga na mami chaptum dhananjaya you practice abhyasa yoga there are so many yoga karma yoga bhakti yoga gyan yoga raja yoga and one day i was talking about adjustment yoga now sri krishna says another yoga he says abhyasa yoga do it again and again you may fail you may not be totally successful in one go 
So now practice it. By practices you can achieve. Your mind can learn. Your buddhi will become purer and your buddhi will become powerful to control the mind. Abhyasa yogena tato. That is possible. Practice. Why don't you practice? Sri Ramakrishna also says, Abhyasa yoga is there. Vairagya and abhyasa. That if you have, you can put your whole mind in me. The goal is to put the mind in God. Be full of the thought of God. That is the goal. And he says, then he says, still, suppose you are not able to do abhyasa. How gradually Sri Krishna teaches to every human being of whatever level he or, he or she is. Abhyase pye si martha, abhyase pye asamarthosi. If you are not able to do even practice so vigor, rigorously, what about that? I find doing practice also difficult. I fail. I can't do that. There is other, there is way for that also. Mat karma paramo bhava. Do work. Whatever work you are doing, you are not able to practice devotion to me, abhyasa to connect with me. Then you are engaged in various work. Do all those work, mat karma. You do for me. Not for your boss, not for your name and fame, not for anything else, not for even earning money. Do it to please me. Mat karma, for the sake of God. So what will happen if I don't get money? How will I live? Don't worry that you all get. But that will be byproduct. You will be earning money. You will be taking care of your company. Your job will be done well. But your goal is to please me. Hari Toshanam is your goal. Mat karma paramo bhava. Supreme, your act, supreme will, supreme, um, your goal of your work is Mat karma to my karma to please me for my sake you work. If I do this, then my Lord will be pleased, my Ishta will be happy. If I teach well, the teacher says, then my my Ishta will be happy. Suppose your Ishta is Krishna or Sri Ramakrishna, he will be pleased. So I want to teach best. That is the goal, not to please the university, not to get the rank of a professor or become the uh, principal in the school, but to please God, mat karma paramo bhava. That also, and by as byproduct of your work, you will get progress, you will be a good teacher, there will be name and fame, but you don't work for that. We work to please your God, to satisfy your God, to offer to God, your worship through the work. Swakarmana tamabhyarchya. God is pleased to be worshipped with our duty, with our performance. So, that is it. Then, madartham apikarmani kurvan siddhim avapsasi. Then, those who work for me, they also attain the supreme siddhi. Gradually, they will attain that. So, Start working for my sake, not for the sake of anything else. And you will attain liberation, you will attain Siddhi, means you will attain me, you will realize God. Then, still, Athaita Dapya Shaktosi, if you cannot do even that, you forget uh, that you are working for God. Athaita Dapya Shaktosi Kartum Mad Yoga Masrita then what will happen? You forget God while working, you think you are working for someone, you want to please someone, you see the um, smiling face of your students and you feel happy, wow, what a wonderful did I did uh, for the students are happy. You forget that your goal was to please your Ishta, but you lower down that and your students are happy and you are satisfied. Don't worry, says Sri Krishna, there is a way out. Sarva karma falatyagam tatak kuru yatagmavan. Then do karma falatyaga, that whatever you have earned, all your honor, oh sir, you are such a good teacher, another person says you are a wonderful officer, but all that glory and name and fame and acceptance that you got, when you are alone in the shrine, they say, Lord, it is not I, it is all you made it do, all is your doing, I offer all the fruits of action to you, all the glory, all the the rewards, all the awards are yours, not mine. So step by step, Sri Krishna says, how we can do desire less love, we can develop desire less love. 
And when we have that desireless love, when we have grown into that through karma phala tyaga or through having doing the work for um, for for our ideal or through um, by putting our mind and the intellect in in, in God, um, whatever way if we do that, then we'll become a true bhakta. You'll become a real bhakta. What happened to a real bhakta? What is the characteristic of a real bhakta? is always peaceful, happy, not strong in mind, not fearful. And quality is said, Advesta Sarva Bhutana Maitra Karuna Evacha. He is non inimical to everyone. He doesn't bother any person. Not a single person is there. He has dvesha or some ill feeling. To everyone, that person has good feeling. Till we have ill feeling towards even a single person or single being, then we are yet to reach the highest height of true bhakti. So, Advesta Sarva Bhutanam. And what will be there? Maitra Karuna Evacha. There will be only Maitri, only love and compassion, fellow feeling, feeling of others. So, that will automatically come if we have gained true bhakti true bhakti nirmamo nirahankara then there will be no attachment no ego this all is possible to be freed from ego total ego freedom from ego while we have we are li having a body consciousness may not be possible but our ego will become so less powerful so less you know, egotistic will become, in language of Sri Ramakrishna, it becomes ripened ego. Ego is there, but that is sweet ego. Soft, juicy, sweet ego. That ego doesn't harm you or doesn't harm anyone. That type of thing will happen if we have pure love for God. Then, Santushta Satatam Yogi. Some type of person, some type of devotee is called Yogi. Earlier he said, Jnani, Bhakta, now he said yogi, in the bhakti yoga. Sat yogi also is called often the Raja yogi or karma yogi. Here he says santushta satatam yogi. That yogi is always contented, always peaceful, doesn't have hankering for anything. All our troubles in life are because of our hankering, our strong desire to have something. That something may be material, maybe some mental, anything, but a strong desire to have something, some hankering for the worldly things is the cause of our pain and suffering. That very strong desire, if you can turn it towards God, then it becomes the cause of our freedom. There is needed yearning, hankering, but that is for God, for our own spiritual evolution. Mayarpita Mano Buddhi Yomad Bhakta Same Priya. Who is my devotee? Who has offered his man, manas and buddhi, mind and intellect to me? Then Sama Shatravacha Mitrecha Tathamana Pamana Devotee can grow to such a height of his behavior in this world to whom the, the, the friend and enemy will be alike. Sama. And that means there will be no enemy at all. The whole world will become friendly. What why Sri Krishna says about the Satru? Another person may consider you as enemical, but you will not consider anyone enemical to you, anyone distasteful to you, anyone unfriendly to you. That person may try to do some harm, doesn't matter, that person doesn't care at all. The worldly things become the thing of too low height. That person is now connected with God, thinks very high, doesn't bother with the worldly uh, level. So, sama satraucha mitra is equal because the friend and foe become similar, same. Is established in equanimity, not disturbed by what comes, some desirable or undesirable thing comes. Doesn't matter at all. Everything becomes the gift of God. At that stage comes prasada buddhi. Whatever you come, you, you get, that is prasada. Whatever you do good, you get honor, that is prasada. Somebody criticize, that is also prasada from God. Everything seems to come to come from God. 
somebody coming to praising you, it's all God's will. Another comes to criticize it, that is also from God. So it doesn't matter at all. Prasada buddhi. Good food today, uncooked food tomorrow, prasada buddhi. In some food, salt is more. In some food, forgotten to put salt, prasada buddhi. Doesn't matter. Sometimes uh, if we, have to, we do not have prasada buddhi, then uh, some food comes, some, sometime uh, forgot. No, mother forgot to put salt. Mother, what is this food? It is so tasteless. How is it done? Your mind is somewhere while cooking. I know that. The son starts ailing, wife starts ailing, like that uh, often it happens if uh, we do not have prasada buddhi. When we have prasada buddhi, what does that matter? One day forgotten. We, I forget so many things. What is there? One day, sometimes somebody forgets. Eat that without complaining, without even telling. Then that person, mother or wife, she herself or, or, or mother-in-law, whoever will eat, she, the, when the, that person will eat, she will be like, oh, I forgot to put salt today, I'm sorry. Done. Prasada buddhi, whatever comes to you. I have heard that once, um, our um, uh, general secretary, Swami Madhavadanda ji, he was so much in God. That used to work so much. General secretary of the Ramakrishna order uh, is the... Um, has so much of responsibility. I think it is the highest responsibility. We have 200 centers at that time, maybe 100 centers, 120 centers were there. And one person who is uh, the CEO of the 120 centers, every monastic member, brahmachari, any government problem, any teacher's problem, all complaint comes finally to general secretary. So much of responsibility general secretary to maintain and run the centers of the Ramakrishna order throughout the world. They had general secretary loaded with so much of responsibility, so much of work, and how saintly they are. Madhavananda ji was that, mother's, Holy Mother's uh, disciple. Holy Mother said, he is the one, like the um, ivory decorated with gold. When the ivory itself is precious, valuable, beautiful. And when you add gold to it, it is supremely valuable, supremely beautiful, decorated. That is Madhavadanji. Holy Mother herself told about her disciple. Madhavadanji became general secretary, later became president also. Our Pramothanandji served Madhavanandaji as a secretary. So Madhavanandaji, once uh, what happened somehow in the um, cooking time, by mistake they added salt to the tea. And it was served everyone, everywhere it goes. We had one central kitchen in Bilderberg. And from there about uh, 200 people go it goes. Now it was done and uh, it went there. Now this who was in charge of uh, kitchen, he, when he found out, then he became scary. What will happen? What the general secretary will say? He came running to the general secretary. And he said, there will be big um, scolding. You don't care like that. And he saw Madhavanji had already finished tea. And he said, fell at his feet and said, Maharaj, I forgot, I my our workers, they forgot, they mistook, there were two bags together, sugar and salt. They mistook the sugar, a salt for the sugar, salt for the sugar and put that. What? What is this sugar, the tea was salty today. Oh, is that so? Nothing. He has no reaction at all, whether it was salty or sugar, if there was sugar at all or not, nothing was there for Madhavanandaji. Even if he had known, he would have not reacted, perhaps, or for the sake of giving alert, he would have said, but for him, it was not an issue at all. That's what he drank. But if he knew, for the sake of others, he would advise, you should be careful that you, the other people get proper things. For himself, nothing. That level, these people can go. Great saints they are. Great worker, we say general secretary, our CEO, great officer. But they are not that officer as we see the CEO of other companies. They are the great saints who work like a CEO of a great Ramakrishna order. So here it says, Sama Satrao Cha Mitrecha and Tatha Mana Pamanayo. Similarly, equal in Mana and Apamana. Very difficult. We often like the people who, who like us, who praise us. Oh, you are so good, you speak so nicely, you cook so well, then you get food. Hmm? 
And uh, someone says, no, no, I feel that it's a lot and tasty, I like that type of food. Then people will not bring food for you. Or, uh, that that's what generally happens. Because we like mana and we dislike apamana. And this what is mana or honor, what is apamana, that also we decide. Something someone may say to correct us or to make it right way. We can, we may treat that according to our mind, that as insult. There was no insult, feeling of insult. Just was being corrected. That mana and apamana is our minds making. But those bhakta, they consider mana and apamana sama are equal to honor and insult. What a great a devotee can raise to, rise to that state. Tulya ninda stutir mauni santushto ena kenasi. And again that santushti in ninda and stuti. All praise, all criticism, so all they are sama. Established in equanimity becomes a devotee, true devotee of God. Let me at the end read from Sri Ramakrishna. What a true devotee should be. How we can reach to that state of desirelessness. That it can come when we are very much uh, devoted to, to the ideal. So it's from the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna. Keshav Sen asked me, why do I not see God? I said, you do not see God because you busy yourself with such things as name and fame and scholarship. The mother does not come to the child as long as it sucks its toy, a red toy. But when after a few minutes it throws the toy away and cries, then the mother takes down the rice pot from the hearth and comes running to the child. You are engaged in arbitration, is saying to Ishan. The Divine Mother says to herself, My child over there is now busy arbitrating and is very happy. Let him be. God will not come. Be happy with the world. In the meantime, Ishan, no, in the meantime, Ishan had been holding Sri Ramakrishna's feet. He said humbly, It is not my will that I should do those things, Master. I know it. This is the Divine Mother's play, her Leela. It is the will of the great enchantress that many should remain entangled in the world. Do you know what it is like? Rama said to Narada, Ask a boon of me. Narada said, O oh Rama, is there anything I lack? What shall I ask of thee? But if thou must give me a boon, Grant that I may have selfless love for thy lotus feet, and that I may not be deluded by thy world-bewitching maya. Rama said, Narada, ask something else. Narada again replied, O oh Rama, I do not want anything else. Be gracious to me and see that I have pure love for thy lotus feet. Pure love is desire, less but I, Sri Ramakrishna continues, I pray to the Divine Mother, O oh Mother, I don't want name and fame. I don't want the eight occult powers. I don't want a hundred occult powers. O oh Mother, I have no desire for creature comforts. Please, Mother, grant me the boon that I may have pure love for thy lotus feet. It is written in the Adhyatma Ramayana that Lakshmana asked Rama, Rama, in how many forms and moods do you exist? How shall I be able to recognize you? Rama said, Brother, remember this. You may be certain that I exist wherever you find the manifestation of ecstatic love. That love makes one laugh and weep and dance and sing. If anyone has developed such love, you may know for certain that God himself is manifested there. Chaitanya Deva reached that state. This is Sri Ramakrishna's statement. Be mad. Be mad with love of God. 
Let people know that Ishan has gone mad and cannot perform worldly duties anymore. Then people will no longer come to you for leadership and arbitration. Throw aside the kosha kushi and justify your name of Ishan. Ritualistic worship, don't do that. Have tremendous pure love for God, says Sri Ramakrishna. Throw aside kosha kushi. Those are the articles that the pots and uh, things that we use, copper vessels that we use for puja. So instead of doing external ritualistic puja, have tremendous love for God, says. Uh, then he, he shall put it. Uh, o mother, make me mad with thy love. What need have I of knowledge and reason, master? Mad, that is the thing. Shivnath once said that one loses one's head by thinking too much of God. What? I said I. Can anyone ever become unconscious by thinking of consciousness? God is of the nature of eternity, purity and consciousness. Through his consciousness one becomes conscious of everything. Through his intelligence the whole world appears intelligent. Shivnath said that some Europeans had gone insane, that they had lost their heads by thinking too much about God in their, in their case it may be true, for they think of worldly things. There is a line of, in a song, divine fervor fills my body and robs me of consciousness. The consciousness referred to here is the consciousness of the outer world. Ishan was seated touching Sri Ramakrishna's feet and listening to his words. Now and then he cast a glance at the basalt image of Kali in the shrine in the Chineswar. In the light of the lamp, she appeared to be smiling. It was as if, as if the living deity, manifesting herself through the image, was delighted to hear the Master's words, holy as the words of the Vedas. Ishan, pointing to the image, those words from your sacred leaves have really come from there. Master. I am the machine and she is the operator. I am the house and she is the indweller. I am the chariot and she is the charioteer. I move as she moves me. I speak as she speaks through me. In, in the Kali Yuga, one does not hear the voice of God. It is said, except through the mouth of a child or a madman or some such person. A man cannot be guru. Everything happens by the will of God. Heinous sins, the sins of many births and accumulated ignorance, all disappear in the twinkling of an eye through the grace of God. When light enters a room that has been kept dark a thousand years, does it remove the thousand years darkness little by little or instantly? Of course, at the mere touch of light, all the darkness disappears. What can a man do? He may speak many words, but after all, is said and done, everything rests with God. The lawyer says, I have said all that can be said. Now the verdict rests with the judge. Brahman is actionless. When it is engaged in creation, preservation and dissolution, it is called the primal power Adya Shakti. The power must be propitiated. Don't you know that it is so written in the Chandi? The gods first sang a hymn to Adya Shakti in order to propitiate her. Only then did Hari wake up from the yoga sleep. Referring to the story of Chandi. Today on uh, Mother's Day, uh, Sri Ramakrishna uh, is teaching that everything depends on Mother's will and by Mother's grace we can conquer ourselves, our selfish desires and purify our mind and make it fit to attain pure devotion to God. By Mother's grace it all is possible. So we pray to the Divine Mother to make us make to have make us have desireless
fill our heart with supreme love for our ideal.